One of the most common concerns I get from people looking to get involved in calisthenics is will I lose size? And if so, is there anything I can do to mitigate the muscle loss when transferring from a gym-based bro split, push-pull legs, or full body program to a calisthenics-based program? It's also a common worry among beginners that if they go down the calisthenics route, they won't see comparable gains to the gym bros. To alleviate any concerns, I'll briefly cover the science behind muscle hypertrophy and explore how you can maximize muscle growth with any program you decide to follow, gym base, calisthenics, and hybrid training alike. Admittedly, muscle loss was also one of my biggest concerns when I made the jump from commercial gyms to the calisthenics workout programs I now follow. Looking back on my videos over the past two years, it's clear that these concerns have now been invalidated. I've continued to progress, my body composition is in the best condition of my life, and my athleticism has also improved massively. Hypertrophy is a chronic adaptation that occurs as the muscles adapt to a stimulus such as resistance. In simple terms, this means that muscle growth will occur, provided you are giving your body the appropriate level of training stimulus over a long enough period of time. While your brain might be able to differentiate between a lat pull down and a body weight pull up, in truth, your muscles aren't as intelligent as your brain. So regardless of whether the resistance is applied through a lat pull down or a body weight pull up, the muscles will adapt and grow over time. The most important factors for muscle hypertrophy to occur are your rep range. You want to stay between the 5 and 35 rep range for muscle hypertrophy to occur. If you're reaching the point of technical failure at anything lower, you're working more strength, which is great if you're trying to improve on your heavy lifts or advanced calisthenics movements, but not ideal for muscle growth. If you're reaching technical failure beyond the 35 rep range, then you are working more endurance, which is awesome for conditioning, but again, not so ideal for muscle growth to occur. The second factor, and one of the most important principles for muscle growth to occur, is applying progressive overload. This can be achieved through adding greater resistance, working harder progressions such as the pistol squat instead of the regular bodyweight squat, and of course by adding more volume through increasing reps and sets. A quick note when overloading is to make sure you are actually progressing and not just speeding up the cadence of your reps. The next factor is making sure you're eating in a calorie surplus. Your muscles need fuel to both perform and grow. If you don't provide them with the energy they need to repair, then at a certain point you'll plateau as your expenditure will exceed your energy requirements. And as energy has to come from somewhere, your body will begin to pull from its own reserves, prioritizing towards survival rather than muscle growth. You don't need to go crazy with the amount of food you consume. Eating slightly over your daily expenditure is ideal for muscle growth without gaining excess weight in the process. For transparency's sake, I'll admit that I'm not counting calories at the moment, but throughout my fitness journey, I've used calorie tracking apps many times. So I have a good gauge of how many calories are in the meals I'm eating on a regular basis and can make minor tweaks such as adding an extra egg to my omelette each morning to ensure that on average I'm eating at a surplus over the weeks, months and years. I'd suggest to get a good gauge of your energy requirements, just commit to a week of tracking everything that you eat in a calorie counting app. After that, you'll have a good idea of how many calories are in the meals that you eat on a regular basis and can adjust accordingly. Assessing your body composition also gives insights into your energy requirements. If you're skinny, then simply eat more. If you're an overweight individual, then I wouldn't suggest eating at a calorie surplus due to the health complications associated around carrying extra weight, such as cardiovascular disease. Work on improving your body composition first and developing a healthy relationship with food and exercise before you start exploring optimizing for muscle hypertrophy. The last thing I want to mention is rest and recovery. I have plenty of videos on my channel already around how to optimize rest and recovery for those of you who are interested. But as my current theme is focused around the fundamental basics, I won't cover this topic in depth in this video. Just get adequate sleep and listen to your body. If it needs to rest, then rest. Or alternatively, do some light active recovery instead of a full blown workout. Warm up appropriately and use correct form to mitigate the risk of injury. As each injury is a setback that can steal weeks and sometimes even months of progress. Also make sure to cool down with mobility work and stretches to keep your body functional 
and reduce the risk of injury even further. If you apply all these principles on a consistent enough basis, it will over time lead to muscle growth. As of late, I've noticed a lot of divide between the calisthenics and gym-based communities. It seems there is a continuing debate between which one is better, and obviously it's calisthenics. No, in truth, like with any training method, they both have their utilities, pros and cons. I get that if you're selling a program, it is in your best interest to put your method of training on a pedestal. But I think this is doing a disservice to beginners. As it creates confusion, they end up program hopping and don't develop the fundamentals required to build a solid base with any program. All approaches work. Calisthenics, gym, hybrid, crossfit, whatever you choose, the important thing to remember is that the fundamental principles such as progressive overload, specificity, and frequency apply to any training program you decide to follow, and that results come with effort and time, so stay consistent. Cheers.